Hello beautiful people, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel if you guys are new here. My name is Gianna Leanne and today I have my March TBR for you guys. And I don't know why, but I always forget March is a month. I don't know why. I'm gonna give you guys my March TBR that I hopefully will get around to reading all the books on here because I'm super excited for the ones that I picked out this month and I'm even more excited to show you guys. We're gonna get right into this, grab a little drink. I have my Starbs, obviously, and let's just talk about some books. This is the stack that I have chose and it's a pretty hefty TBR, so we're gonna see if I wanna get through these. The first one that I chose for March is I Wanna Die But I Want to Eat Taboki by Bake Sehi, and this is actually translated. This is a really, really short book, and it's a memoir, so I'm super excited to get into this because I have been wanting to pick up more memoirs recently, but this one is the South Korean hit therapy memoir recommended by BTS's RM, and I'm pretty sure BTS, if that's what I'm thinking of, is super, super popular. I'm not personally into it, but I know a lot of people love them, but for this one, we have our main character, obviously, Bok, Bake? I don't know the main character's name. They're a successful young social media director at a publishing house. When she begins seeing a psychiatrist, she hides her feelings well at work and with friends. But it says that this is a therapy memoir for the social media generation and a book to keep close and to reach for in times of darkness, which I think it sounds super, super good. And I remember when this was just releasing and everyone was talking about it. I just saw it at my Indigo one day and I was like, I need this book in my life. So hopefully I'll get around to this this month and yeah I'm super excited for this one also some of these books are for an upcoming video hint hint just to throw that out there and then the rest are just ones that I personally want to read the next one I have I actually did already start it's this is where it ends by Mariek Ninjkamp we're not even gonna say it <laughs> I can't pronounce anything but it says everyone has a reason to fear the boy with the gun. This one actually is about a school shooting, which is super, super sad, which it is super, super sad what I've read so far. But this is told from four different perspectives over the span of 50 hour harrowing minutes. Terror reigns as one student's calculated revenge turns into the ultimate game of survival. So that's a little bit of backstory on this book, but I've been into reading more sad books lately. So I knew this one would be good for March. I don't know why I'm in like a sad genre era right now. Last month I was in a thriller era. This month I'm in a sad girl era. We're just, we're just gonna vibe with it. <laughs> The next one I have is a romance because I haven't really been reading romances that often or as often as I normally am. So I have The Roommate Experiment and this is by Elena Armas and this is actually the second book. Well, you can read them as standalones, but it's the second one from the Spanish Love Deception, which I did not read. So hopefully that will be okay and I won't be confused. But I think this just focuses on a different couple in the world of the Spanish love deception. I also, mainly when I first picked this up, I picked it up because of the cover and it has a dog on it. So you know that I had to buy it, obviously. But this seems like a little rom-com moment. Wow, the text is small. Look at how small that text is. <laughs> but this one sounds really interesting. We have Rosie Graham, she's a romance author, and she gets into like a creative slump apparently. It seems like she's having some rough times because she isn't able to produce any work to make some money. So she wants to stay in her best friend's empty apartment. And Rosie didn't know that her best friend already lent it out to her cousin. He surprisingly allows Rosie to stay with him. So we have some forced proximity going on. Basically, their whole little thing sparks up because the cousin realizes that Rosie has been having some writer's block, so he comes up with this amazing idea where he's gonna take her on a series of dates to kind of like inspire her and like spark her imagination to get out of this writer's block, basically. And I think it just follows from there and I'm gonna have to read it to figure out what's going on. It seems super, super cute, which is something I'm gonna need if I'm reading all these sad books. I'm super excited to pick this one up. Gorgeous cover, and it's by a known author that a lot of people love, so hopefully that will make the book 10 times better. Okay, so the next book I have broke the internet, and I still haven't read it. I've honestly been putting this off, but it is Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings, and I actually got this book sent to me by my best friend Lily from England. We actually did a book exchange where we annotated a book for each other and sent them to each other, so that's a really fun 
vlog, but this is the book that she ended up sending me that she partially started to annotate, but she told me that she hated this book, so she didn't even finish it. So that kind of makes me nervous. This is a heavy book though, but she did write a little bit of annotation, so I am excited to read this and read her annotations from what she did annotate. But for this one, I hear that it's super, super toxic. It's like Gossip Girl, but make it British. And a lot of people have told me that it's just so toxic that they like don't want to like even read it. Ooh, it has text messages in it. I honestly have not even thought about this book since I got it because the length honestly kind of intimidated me a little bit with everything that i've heard about this book i knew that i had to pick it up at some point and i think march is the month i'm going to do it Ooh, the back looks really cool it says how many loves do you get in a lifetime the next book i have is bleeding heart yard by ellie griffiths i ended up getting this one for christmas and i knew nothing about it my mom picked it out for me but then i realized that it was slowly becoming more popular in the book community so i was finally in the mood to pick this up this month but this is more of like a murder mystery thriller situation and it says that we follow cassie fitzgerald fitzgerald okay when she was in school in the 1990s her and her friends basically killed a student and she buried that secret very deep down and wanted to forget about it and now 20 years later she's happily married and she's a mother she loves her new job but her husband is a police officer that is already a problem right there but basically her husband convinces her to go to the school reunion oh hello he always wants to be in all my videos guys Basically, at the school reunion, another old student, they're grown up now, they end up being found dead in the bathroom, apparently because of a drug overdose. But then she gets wrapped up in a whole investigation all over again, and a lot of secrets end up turning up that apparently needed to stay buried. And it seems like a crazy ride, I'm not even gonna lie. It's definitely a different plot line than I'm used to reading, so I'm excited to pick up a thriller mystery that I haven't really heard about or haven't really heard of the plot before. So this one should be good, hopefully it's good. The next book I have is not known at all. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen anyone in the book community that I follow read this, but it's Love and Theft. It's a memoir of mental illness, and this is by Jocelyn Patton. We're on a little memoir pattern going on here. I just personally love memoir, so I'm hoping to pick them up a lot more in 2023. But specifically for this one, I found this through Goodreads. It was recommended to me from Goodreads, and this just seemed so interesting. It seemed like the perfect vibe for me. And it's another one of those sad books that I'm... <laughs> surprisingly wanted to pick up this month. For the back, it says, right now, in your hands, you hold a story that may seem hard to believe. In Love and Theft, author Jocelyn Patton explores her reality of serious mental illness and its unrelenting impact. This tour through her mind touches on anxiety and depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. No matter what you know about mental illness, you will not be able to put this book down until its final words which seems very, very dark and hard to read. So I'm curious to see if this book is gonna pull on my heartstrings, if it's gonna make me cry, and just learning Jocelyn Patton's story, which I think will be so interesting. This quote in the book is so cute. You can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. I love that. That's so cute. I love that. I'm excited to pick this one up considering it's not known at all and it's also a memoir, which I mentioned. And yeah, I'm super excited to pick this up. The cover is really interesting and I really hope that the cover is kind of symbolic in a way throughout the story, but I'll have to read and see. And the last book I have on my March TBR is Ricochet by Krista and Becca Ritchie. You guys know from my past videos recently how obsessed I am with the Addicted series right now and how much I just want to continue continue it. So I had to throw this book into my March TBR. Like, are you surprised? No. I've talked about this whole series a lot on my channel, but we basically have a friends to lovers little trope going on. And I can just tell you guys from the first book that I'm just hooked to the series and I'm so excited to see what ends up happening with Lily and Lo because they have officially become my favorite book couple that I've ever read. Super, super excited to pick this up. It's a crazy series. It's just a roller coaster of emotions and brings you throughout this whole big thing that you 
you get to basically witness. But I love the second book cover. Like, it's purple, my favorite color. But this one I think is actually shorter than the first one, so that's kind of sad considering I just don't want this series to end. But I have three other books after this one, so hopefully I'll enjoy this one as much as the first one, so then I will want to continue the series. And also start the Calloway Sister series because I would love to read that along with the Addicted series to get to know all the couples that pop up into the book and get to know all their own stories. I'm probably most excited for this one to be honest. But yeah, those are all the books that I have chose to be on my March TBR. We have a very hefty stack this month. Hopefully I will have an amazing reading month just like I did last month. I was very, very proud of myself and felt super accomplished. Hopefully we can do that again and find some new favorites as always. But I really hope you guys found some new books to add to your March TBR. And I want you guys to let me know what books you are reading this month and what one you're most excited for because I would love to have the comments filled with lots of new book recommendations for myself and everyone else that is watching as well. But I do think that is all I have for you today. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you guys did please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff you guys know how to do. But with that I hope you guys are having an amazing wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye! I love Starb so much. Excuse me, I'm trying to film a video. Oh, don't fall off. Tight in. Oh, I'm eating my hair. We're friends. You wanted to be in the video. Mmm. Slay.